Hello and welcome to the Existential Stoic Podcast, episode 22. I'm Danny. I'm here with Randy. Hey, Danny. Hey, Randy. And today we're talking about addiction, how to live with it and how to overcome it. Oh, this is a salient topic. Everybody's got addictions these days. Literally everyone ha- has addictions these days. It is true, right? I think addiction's a big part of, you know, I think really addiction is a big part of being a person in a way because it is, it's, you know, it's habitual, right? It's habit. Yeah. I'm reading this book called Hooked by Nero Yall, and he talks about how actually we are the most addicted we've ever been as a culture, and because all these companies and corporations now know how to make people addicted, we're going to become the most addicted society ever in the next 40 years. You know, I actually believe that. And you know, it's funny, I have a, uh, one of my good friends, he, his, uh, his brother works in Silicon Valley. And he was telling us the one time he was kind of complaining. He's like, you know, it's insane. I won't say which company he works for or anything. But he's like, it's insane. They have the smartest people in the world trying to figure out how to get you to click. And he's like, in a way, it's kind of sad because, you know, you have all these brilliant people doing this. He's like, but at the same time, he's like, when you think about it, it's crazy. Because all they're doing is trying to get you to stay on page, stay to be advertised to. Yeah, and so here's the thing. I can hear most of the people listening right now being like, I'm not addicted. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm not addicted. Well, here's the thing. The average person looks at their cell phone about, they report about 35 times a day. Mm -hmm. However, measured, it's about 150 times a day. And, (laughs) and, And, I mean, if you have notifications on your phone or on your computer, all of those are addictions. And they're just not socially recognized addictions yet. They're like back in the 1940s, how three out of five doctors recommended Marlboros. Yeah. <laughs> or like, you know, how they prescribed Valium for everything. Right. And didn't think it was a problem, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's funny, too, because um, you mentioned that. I was looking this up a while ago, but the average American reports, again, spending about four to five hours watching TV a day. And if you look at cell phone usage, like you suggested, you know, it's funny because when you look at how to reduce screen time, the first thing everybody says is turn off your notifications because it keeps you going back to your phone, right? It's, and it keeps you getting that response. Oh, maybe I got a like, maybe this happened. Um, but people are on their phones average about five hours a day. Now that's reported too, right? So that's mm-hmm. 10 hours right there. Mm-hmm. What the hell are we doing? Yeah, and everybody's like, I'm not addicted. I could stop whenever I want. I just choose not to stop. That's like classic addict. <laughs> yeah, it is. And you know, it's funny too, because like, I mean, we can say this, I can say this coming from a place where I, I have been addicted to things in the past. So I, I do know what addiction is. We're not just bullshitting. And the other thing that's funny too is with, with the cell phone use too, I think it's interesting that you see like the idea of taking like a, a detox from like digital life, right? From all your technology, that suggests that it probably is an addiction. If people need to literally force themselves to stay away from it and stay away from for a day or two or whatever it's probably an addiction yeah so i I think a lot of us have addictions i would say maybe even all of us have addictions whether we admit it or not i mean some addictions are easier to recognize than other addictions like for a while i smoked cigarettes and i was addicted to cigarettes and so that was like an easier addiction to recognize than some other things like checking email but yeah, these are yeah. all addictions because there's pain and pleasure associated with it. There's a little bit of pleasure when I check the email. And then if I don't check it for long enough, there's a little bit of pain associated with not checking it. Well, yeah, exactly, right? It's like even, even social media, there's a there's the pleasure of the like, the anticipation, right? Um, the excitement for when you get a notification and something happened and, you know, you want to check immediately to see what happened. There's these sort of, it's this, it's this chemical response and it's this... It's this sort of like, you know, pleasure seeking behavior that we all have. And I think, you know, like you said, some addictions are more easy to identify. Cigarettes are like an easy one, right? Um, It's easy to recognize that you have an addiction. There's that physical component. I think some are also just happen to be easier to live with. Um, And so people don't necessarily identify them as addictions right off the bat. Sometimes they think of it as like, you know, beneficial or whatever, you know, who knows. Um, so some, I think addictions come in all forms. That's kind of the issue with it, right? Is that we can be addicted to almost anything. Yeah. But they all kind of follow the same pattern where there's a trigger, then you take an action, then there's a variable reward. And then again, it takes you around to that, to that trigger. And so you kind of get in this loop 
And the, the deceitful thing that a lot of these companies do is they're using internal triggers, things like boredom mm -hmm. or loneliness or sadness. All of these things that occur to all of us, they're using these internal triggers as triggers to create some action. Like if you're feeling lonely, how about go on Facebook and look at some pictures of friends? And then you start, you take that action, then you get a reward feeling better and again it just reinforces the cycle over and over again and we become addicts then these internal triggers come up which just normally happen anyways but now we have a new habit a new addictive habit well and it's funny too because like you talk about facebook and social media are interesting too because there's this this false sense of connectedness hmm. that comes with it that i think you know so many people are willing to believe because they're addicted like you're willing to believe that, oh, I'm more connected, I'm, I'm staying in touch with friends, that's my justification for using it. But really, is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I've heard so many people tell me that, well, well, I stay in touch with people that way. I'm like, I have a phone. I could call the people I need to stay in touch with. Like, come on, is that really the reason why you're on it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny to listen to these excuses too, because I think they are excuses yeah. when you really admit it. <laughs> yeah, so with, with addictions, I think we've kind of defined addictions. So. Basically, in life, my, my opinion is that you're going to have addictions. But yeah. it's up to you to choose which addictions you want to have. My experience is you're going to have addictions. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah, definitely going to happen. Touche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so the thing is you're going to have addictions. And your addictions can either be positive addictions or they can be negative ones. Because similarly, to, I, I think addictions and habits are very closely related Oh, yeah, I think, you know, it's funny. I think, like, it's almost like they're they're like cousins or two sides of the same coin, right? Mm -hmm. And the trick is, you know, I think habits are some... If we were defining it, I would say addictions have a negative component where habits are probably more positive, right? Mm -hmm. That would probably be the best way to distinguish the two. Yeah. Because addictions are habits, too. It is habitual action. I mean, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so Aristotle says that we're all the sum of our habits. And basically, it's like a universal law. What you sow, you will reap. So... Whatever habits you're going to do, you're going to reap the rewards of those. So are those habits going to be negative addictions or are they going to be positive habits? And that's kind of up to you. But how to live with them, I would say first you need to find out exactly where you are. Like list out on a pencil and paper what are your addictions. Yeah, I mean that is, you know, it's difficult too. And be on, you know, being honest is hard. And I think writing down is a great way to do it because you don't have to worry about other people seeing it if you don't want to. You can be just, it can be just for you, right? But if you can get your addictions listed at least, that's a good starting place for sure. Yeah. Admitting it even is a good starting place. They always say that, right? In any kind of recovery thing, they say, you know, the first thing you have to do is you have to admit that you're an addict because it's the only way you're going to actually identify that, hey, this is probably a problem. Yeah. And, and a good way to actually see some addictions that might be hidden from you are to actually keep track of what you spend your time on. Because if you, they say that if you want to see what a man's interests are, look at his checkbook, see where he spends his money. Well, if you want to see what someone's addictions and habits are, see how they spend their time. So for every day for a week, just do the best you can tracking how much time you, you do it. Like, let's say three hours at work two hours on Facebook, an hour watching Netflix, half hour eating, mm -hmm. half hour eating, all these different things you do throughout the day, you can then track that over a week, add them all up and see where am I spending the most of my time? Yeah, am I doing something that seems to be excessive, too much? Um, you know, do I feel bad when I don't do it? You know, all these kinds of things help us understand, you know, our actions and our behaviors. Yeah, and then, and then you get to actually evaluate it because you can see, you know, is this addiction slash habit taking me in the direction I want to go in my life. I think that's important too, right? Is to ask yourself, you know, where do I want to end up? And is this going to actually get me there? Or is it hindering it? And you know, I know addictions are tricky because we, we've been talking about addictions to like technology and there's lots of, I mean, addictions come in all shapes and form. And I think with them come a lot of also like, you know, a lot of, a lot of times depression, anxiety. There's a lot of other factors that might be sort of causing it or, or mm -hmm. perpetuating it, right? Oh, yeah, there are chemical addictions oh, yeah. that make it really difficult. It yeah. does make it difficult, and I think you're right. Identifying where you want to be is a great way to start looking at your life and asking yourself, is this really, do I want to be doing this in 10 years? Mm -hmm. Do I see myself continuing to do this in 10 years? I know in my own in my own life, right? I mean, when I looked at my life, I was addicted and, and it was something that like, I didn't want to 
see myself doing this forever, it seemed absurd, right? It seemed like such a waste. Masturbation, right? Right, always. <laughs> it's always masturbation, I know, right? <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Now I just got it down to a couple times a day, it's better. <laughs> it's manageable, at least. Not taking yeah. breaks from class to go to the bathroom and stuff, <laughs> right. Jesus. No, yeah. but I, yeah, it's like, you know, when you really look at it, is this something I want to continue doing you know, down the road, or is this really taking me on the wrong direction? Can I live the life I want doing this? I think those are important questions to ask. Yeah, and, and also to realize that any addictions you may have, there's at least one person in the world who's had that same addiction and overcome it and written a book about it or oh, developed yeah. a system around it. Probably more than one. Yeah, yeah <laughs> there's a exactly. lot. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the thing is, if somebody else can do it, it's something that you can do too. And, you know, on that note, too, I think one of the most important things for getting over addictions, especially difficult ones, is finding what works for you. Sometimes, you know, I mean, I know in my own personal experience, it took numerous attempts. It's not going to be your first try. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get through something immediately. And you might have to try different methods. Be, if you're willing to do it, though, it is doable, I think. And looking long term, I think, is an interesting point, right? Because what do I want from life and what habits can I develop that are positive to get me there? Mm -hmm. How can I change my behavior? Because if addiction is a habit... You can habituate yourself, in a sense, out of it, right? You yeah. can start to change those habits to something positive. Yeah. And addictions are also something that you always need to to keep an eye out for. Like, even addictions that you've overcome, there's still something that you need to watch out for. Like, for a long time, I was addicted to smoking cigarettes. And I really wanted to quit smoking cigarettes, but every time I tried, the <laughs> pain of going without a cigarette was too much. And then... I tried, you know, I tried going cold turkey, I tried the nicotine things, and on multiple attempts I tried these things and nothing worked. But I just kept on trying because I knew that I didn't want to smoke cigarettes in the long term, and I knew that there had to be a way to get over it. So eventually I tried hypnosis, and that one hypnosis session, and I was done. I actually, I think that's awesome. That yeah. worked so well, yeah. Yeah, it's like, crazy. I, basically, with that hypnosis session, immediately when that was over, I knew that smoking cigarettes was a choice. It wasn't, there was, there was a previous habit, but I knew any moment I wanted to smoke a cigarette, it was a choice, and I knew I could look at it and see, do I want to smoke cigarettes in my future? The answer is no, so I'm not going to smoke cigarettes now. Well, you know, it's interesting, too, that you mentioned that, because it is a choice, right? No matter what addiction you have, I mean, I know sometimes they don't feel like choices all the time. They feel like you have to do it. You have no choice. And that can be the most crushing feeling in the world. Trust me, I know. But it is ultimately a choice, and, and changing your behavior is a choice. And I think that's the hardest part, is actually taking control, being an agent again. You know, taking control of yourself again, exercising your agency, because addiction, especially harmful addictions, are a loss of agency. You're letting yourself essentially be controlled by something else, right? Your habits are controlling you, you're not controlling you. And I think it is very difficult to transition back to being an agent, but it's possible. Because if you made a choice to start something, you can always make a choice to end it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the most important thing to keep in mind. Yeah. And also, like, don't beat yourself up. Mm -mm. Like, that's such a habit nowadays, at least oh, personally, God. and I think for a lot of other people. Yeah. We just beat ourselves up because we think we're supposed to be perfect and everything. Like, look at anyone. Nobody has a perfect life. You know, you know, it's funny, though, but it's like this mentality, too. I recently got a puppy, right? And it's funny because you look online and all this stuff, and it's like, Everybody that gets a dog now has to be perfect. You have to be perfect. The dog has to do 4,000 tricks. You have to be able to perform a dance and all this bullshit. And it's like, do I, even, I don't even want that. That's not a dog, you know? It's funny because you got to really think about these things. But this idea of perfection has been so sort of like thrown in our faces that only, you know, people that are worthwhile are perfect in everything they do. And that's absurd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what really gives us our humanity is our imperfections. It really does. It also makes us different and unique in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and it's also about what do you want in your life I mean I think that's the critical thing there right yeah, we talk about this all the time we do uh, authenticity and really deciding what you want your life to be I think those are the two most crucial things right mm -hmm. and learning you know it's funny we were talking about this right before the show um and you know you mentioned Aristotle so I'll bring him up again mm -hmm. Aristotle is interesting because you know the Greeks talks about pleasure and pain as really important, learning to feel pleasure for the right things and learning to feel pain for the right things, right? Because really, most of our actions can be reduced to pleasure and pain and our understanding of it. Yeah, and and I, our, our seeking pleasure yeah. and our avoiding pain. Exactly. And, you know, it is tricky because, you know... And, oh, can I interject? Yeah, go ahead. And interject. All, not, not only seeking pleasure and avoiding pain, but also realizing that there are ones in the short term and the long term and they can be at odds with each other and oftentimes will choose the short term pleasure for the long term pain. 
We will, yes. Yeah. Because you know what it is? It's funny. We trick ourselves. We don't see the long... It's hard for us to... I mean, that's absolutely true in addiction, right? You'll choose the immediate pleasure because it seems so difficult and the far away thing seems so hard that you just don't even want to think about it. You forget about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really part of addiction is you forget about the long term because you're so caught up in the short term. And you know, that's one of the difficult things changing it, right? But once you start looking long term, you realize sometimes it is important to take the pain now because it will make the long term better and easier. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good point, right? So how can we start looking at and how can we start developing habits where we experience pleasure for the right things? Because this is a tricky, I think it's a tricky thing, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, we need, to, you know, we need to start with the end in mind. And, and I absolutely hate how that's a chapter of Seven Habits of Highly Effective oh, People. Oh, is it? Because that book is garbage. Ugh, but damn it's, it. a, it's a good habit to begin <laughs> with the end in mind. And here's a reason why. Because once you know what the result is, the intended result, then you need to ask yourself, what habit can I develop that will guarantee getting that result? Can I say something about that too? Just because, you know, that book is terrible. Yeah. It's also just common sense, right? Mm -hmm. If you know the end you're working towards, you can plan. Yeah. So we don't need to reference it. We're fine. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's true in almost anything. Right. You know, Christ, they talk about that in teaching, you know, backward course design. Uh -huh. You know, you want to know where you're going, otherwise you're just going to go nowhere. Yeah. So once you have a plan, a path, right? We want to know where we need to go. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So here, here I thought you were going to say something about how good of an idea that was, making sure our habits. It is a good idea. I think it's a great idea. It is. No, I'm just saying. Like, you know, we don't have to talk about. It. Yeah. yeah. So, whatever. anyways, once you once you know what the intended result is, ask yourself what habits can I develop that will guarantee that result. And so, like for instance, uh, I started a YouTube channel uh, about four years ago. It's and, been four years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I knew that to be, to at least get recognition, be noticed on YouTube, I'd have to produce content regularly. So I said, what habit can I produce that will create the most content? And it was create one video a day. And so I developed that habit and it was that habit that ended up getting the results that I wanted. Well, you know, it's interesting with habits too, because we often think of how difficult it might be to develop it, but they're really, you know, I, I think it's funny, like that is a good example. Exercising is a great example too, right? Where you, you set yourself a goal that's achievable, one video a day or say 30 minute routine a day. And yes, it's hard at first. You will have to remind yourself, you will have to force yourself to do it. But after a little bit of time, it's surprising how it becomes part of your day. And then you start to feel bad if you miss it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it, I noticed that immediately with like anything I'm doing when I develop a habit, that right? That sounds a lot like an addiction. You feel bad when it you're does, missing right? it. right? Yes. <laughs> it becomes a part of your life. But positive habits, I think, you know, they impact our life in the right way and get us towards that goal that we want. And so I think this is the distinction, right? Mm -hmm. Is that we'll call it a habit because it's positive and because I might feel bad when it's not part of my day. I might feel guilty, but it's something that's working towards the end that I want rather than working against me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's feeling pleasure for the right things, right? You know, yeah. you know, whether it's exercising or whether it's starting your channel and trying to develop the habits that will help you be successful later on. Yeah. But it's interesting too, because everything we do can be broken down into these baby steps where we can develop habits that will help us get to the end goal that we want. Yeah, but developing the habit, that can be the difficult part, Again. especially especially if it's something hard to do, like exercising or eating vegetables. <laughs> Those <laughs> or, are challenging. Yeah, yeah. So how can, how can we make it easier to develop these habits? Well, I think, you know, um, I think one of the best things you can do, and I don't know if we talked about this before or not, I can't remember, but I think one of the best things is make it so that you can't fail at mm, first mm -hmm. you know because we often i mean we are taught from a very young age we've talked about this a million times but we are we are indoctrinated to believe that failure is horrible mm -hmm. and that is probably one of the most harmful beliefs we have is that you have to be perfect and that to fail is is the worst thing in the world because it makes you not want to do anything or try anything right because you're so afraid of failure that you just don't do anything at all mm -hmm. and then you do nothing your life is nothing right so I think, you know, make it so easy that you can't fail because you can always do more. So if it's exercising, you know, make your make your plan at first just to get changed into your workout clothes and put your mat out. That's mm -hmm. it. You know, that's all. That's all you got to do that day. It takes one minute. And if you accomplish it, you've accomplished your goal. Or, you know, make it one push-up. 
Mm -hmm. You can always do extra, but as long as you do that, you've succeeded that day. And then eventually, once you habituate getting changed and you habituate a routine of having a time established to work out, you'll find yourself doing more. Hey, I already did my one push-up. I could do five. Mm -hmm. Great. I did extra. I feel better. And you keep doing that. You reinforce that good positive behavior, right? That positive feeling. Yeah, that is such a good uh, recommendation. And there's a really good book, How to Be an Imperfectionist by Stephen Guys, where he talks about that as well. But that is such a really good method of doing it and also just making it easier like we're talking about exercise well how about laying out your exercise clothes the night before and how about how about visualizing yourself the alarm clock going off in the morning you jumping out of bed putting on your exercise clothes going and exercising how about visualizing that the night before and it's like all these things that we can do to make it easier to 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 not make it so difficult to actually take that action All those things can help develop. I'm glad you mentioned that too. It's funny how much our our interpretation and attitude about something really affects whether or not we'll do it. And it's funny, but you can you can literally actually change your perspective on something. You can force positivity. You can force energy by just changing the way you think about something. It's not hard. I mean, it's it's funny. It's it's almost like comical how easy it is. Like I was, we were doing this thing a a while ago where we were working through this book together and it it had the uh, morning pages you remember Mm -hmm. doing this exercise and it was a great exercise but at first I was struggling with it and I was struggling with getting it done because it seemed like it was taking me forever and I was like oh I gotta get up in the morning and do this first thing blah Mm -hmm. and then I was like you know what it's supposed to be for my betterment I'm just gonna start treating this like it's fun I'm gonna pretend like it's fun and be positive about it and the funny thing is it worked I started writing it was so much better what I was writing and I started using this tactic in a lot of other things where I would just tell myself like I like doing this. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to do this. And then all of a sudden, I am excited to do it. Yeah, I remember when uh, when we were doing that, and you came to that realization like a week before I was having yeah. a lot of difficulty <laughs> with doing it. I was like, why do I need to wake up so early and write these stupid pages? And then we spoke about this, and it was very helpful to change perspective. But it's something that you can totally choose to do. And oftentimes, you know, you have to fake the action first. You do, yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, what's that saying? Fake uh, it till you make it? Fake it till you make it. There it is. Yeah, because you need, oftentimes emotion follows action. They say that emotion is energy in motion. So act the part of the person who's enthusiastic or happy or whatever that, whatever that whatever you want to be or do, act it first. Pretend. Look at little kids. They play pretend all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's how we learn something new, right? It's how we start to do something we're unfamiliar with. We pretend like we can do it. Yeah, yeah. We're just little kids who forgot that we're little kids. Like that's basically yeah. all that we are as grown-up humans, is that we forgot. Now we think we're this rigid thing. Well, that's just it, right? We we get in this mindset, and this is why it's so hard. And I said it's so comically easy because it is. Once you realize how easy it is to shift your perspective, but we get caught in this mindset that this is how things are. And we refuse to look at it any other way. And I think this is a great exercise because it can make you more open to other things. Just by convincing yourself that it's doable, it's possible. Even just telling yourself that, hey, I can do this. Because there's so much, I mean, we destroy ourselves with negativity. It's insane. We let our fears, we let our negativity destroy us. And with addictions, that's one of the worst things because it's what keeps you addicted to bad things, right? Is this victim mentality, this idea that you can't overcome it, the idea that the world's against you, or that for whatever reason, you know, you're trapped in this situation. And it does feel trapped sometimes, but it's a perspective change does help immensely with that. And it does take effort, don't get me wrong, I don't wanna make it sound like it's super simple, but it does take effort, but it is amazing the, you know, the, the benefits you get from it. Yeah. So, addictions, how to live with it, how to overcome it. Uh, what do you think? Well, there's so many, I mean, oh, what, oh my God, I just lost my fingers a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we dealt pretty well with how to live with addictions, because here's the thing, you're go- if you're living, you're going to have addictions. That's basically it. Yeah. So you need to choose which ones you want. How to overcome them. Yeah. Get help. Yeah. I mean, depending on the addiction you're going to need to get help, right? Yeah. I mean, we've all experienced this. And I think, you know, one of the, if you're struggling with something really difficult, and I'll say from my own personal experience, you know, I think, first of all, we already said admitting that you have an addiction is crucial. You have to admit it in order to, to move beyond it. But also, that also helps you 
become willing to get help, I think, and talk about it. And talking about it's helpful too because it puts it in perspective and you realize you're not alone. And then you can start evaluating, you know, we've been talking about, I mentioned like the victim mentality, the, you know, the perspective we get stuck in, in addiction, is changeable. But we get stuck in it. And I think, you know, you need to identify this and you need to start working through, why am I in this mental state? Why am I thinking this way? Why am I viewing the world this way? What is really the issue? And once you start taking steps forward, you'll see those changes happen very quickly. We've talked about this with literally, it, it is true for almost everything in our lives. Whether it's, you know, we talked about it with dealing with finances and debt, right? You make baby steps towards that progress and before you know it, you're on your way towards your goal. But this is the difficult thing in life, right? It's always the difficult thing is starting. That is always the challenge is, you know, we all want a better life, but why are so many of us so unwilling to make the effort to change, right? And starting is hard because we are afraid of so many things. It's amazing Mm -hmm. when you really look at it, but it's possible to break through this. And I think a lot of it does have to do, I mean, getting help is great because a lot of it does have to do with our mental state, our psychological, you know, issues, fears, what have you. And sometimes working them out will make other things easier. But I think also, honestly, in my own view, I think just taking action and starting to assert your agency is probably one of the best things you can do in your life because it makes you realize you can do anything. Yeah, definitely. And, and I mean, like you said, getting started. Most people don't ever start. No, and that's the problem, right? Uh, yeah, but here's the thing. Anything that you want in life is totally available to you. We live in an infinite universe. We live in an abundant universe. Yeah. I mean, honestly, they say that the world's whatever you think it is. So if you think it's kind of a scarcity type of thing, well, fine. Your world will be that way. But I choose to have an ab- to live in an abundant universe. And so anything is really possible when you put your mind to it. And you just got to execute. You know, it's it. funny. And I think what we're talking about here is really important. It's this idea of, you know, we talked about this too, the creating our own world. We create the world through our interpretation. Everything we think will be reinforced in how we see the world because we are literally interpreting the world that way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think addictions are tricky because you have to break out of that way of thinking in order to start moving forward. And it is all about just starting to change how you think. It is possible. And it's interesting how much we struggle with it. I, I really do. I find this fascinating because I come back to it all the time. I mean, it's insane. I know these things and yet I still struggle with them. And sometimes, you know, I have to talk to Randy in order Mm -hmm. to, you know, get my perspective shift again and be like, hey, wait a minute, what? I know I can do this. Here's here's the thing. So in nowadays, we all are living this very individualized life. You know, before you basically live with your family until you got married. So you're always in a community. Nowadays, it's very individualistic and you've got to do great things with immense willpower (laughs) and And meanwhile, us as individuals, we're against these giant corporations who are employing the smartest people of our generation to figure out how to get us addicted. Yeah. And so, you know, getting help is one of the best things that you can do because you can't, like, you can only see your own world. But when you're able to talk with somebody else or... Uh, interact with other people, they can open your eyes to things that you couldn't see by yourself. Well, yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned, like, too, like, books. You know, there's there's literally any addiction you might have. There's a book that somebody wrote, a memoir, how they got over it. And, you know, the nice thing about books is it can be a way to talk to someone without literally, you know, speaking uh-huh. to them. I think you're still interacting with someone, and it's a great starting point. You know, I think getting information, we've talked about this before, too, right? Gaining knowledge on something is a way to stop fearing it. Because, you know, Epicurus said, you know, our, our ignorance is often the cause of our fear. Once we become knowledgeable about something, we stop fearing it. We stop worrying about it so much. Mm-hmm. And we can actually move forward and move beyond it. And addiction's interesting because I think, you know, it is true. Literally, every company is trying to work towards getting addicts. Because they're the people that will spend the most money. Mm-hmm. Everything they have on those products or on the services that they provide. You know, Facebook wouldn't do well if everybody went on for two minutes a day to check, you know, to see if their friends contacted yeah. them and then left, right? Your, your well-being is not in the best interest of the company. No. <laughs> like, you know, they want you to be on Facebook all the time because then they can advertise. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the same with every other internet company that's based on advertisements. I mean, that's how they make their money. Yeah. You have to keep this in mind. And the funny thing is, you have the power. I always think it's funny when people talk about it, like, 
Literally everyone could theoretically sign off on Facebook and just delete their accounts. It is possible. We can make that company worth zero in a day. Granted, it's not gonna happen, but we could. I think we forget that we have the power to change these things in our lives. We act like things are fixed when they're not. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It's amazing, but it's something we all struggle with. And I know we do, because I know, I mean, we both struggle with it all the time, oh, yeah, right? Definitely. And, and so when you mentioned reading books, I used to read books just for the sake of reading them. Like I'd read them, I'd be like, oh, that's interesting. Oh. And that was it. And that, and then one day I was like, you know what? I better start implementing this stuff. And, and I encourage all of you, when you find those books that have action steps, actually be one of the people who takes those action steps. Because there's this saying, to know and not to do is not yet to know. You yeah. can read it, you can know it intellectually, but until you actually put it into action, you don't know it at all. No, because so, you have no practical experience yeah. with it, right? So so what's I mean, what's the loss of just trying it out? Just doing it. Just be like, okay, for 30 days, I'm gonna do this. And you know what's interesting about that method too, um, and that's important about it is, you know, I read somewhere that they said, you know, like a lot of these, say, self-help books or, or ways to overcome certain things, it's one person's method that really worked for them. So the interesting thing there is that it may work for you or parts of it might work for you, but you won't know unless you try it. Mm -hmm. But once you try it, it gives you it gives you a sort of a new way of looking at something and it gives you something to work with that you can then modify, you can change, you could go look then for other ones because now that you have some experience with one method, now you have an, at least an idea of what the other methods might bring to the table and what might work for you. And the more experience you gain with different ways of looking at things or different ways of interacting and overcoming things, the more you'll be likely to find what works for you. And I think that's crucial because, you know, I found in my own life, you know, honestly, when it comes to some aspects of my life, one approach might work, but it doesn't work when it comes to other aspects of my life because for whatever reason, you know, it's just not me. You know, it doesn't, th those actions won't work for me. It won't mm -hmm. help me get through it. But by trying it and by doing for uh, however long it is, when you're done that, you're not the same person you were before. No, you're not. Yeah. And so you're a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And every time you have to start over, you're a little bit further than you were before. And you're a little bit closer to whatever it is your goal is. You know, it's interesting too, because I think, you know, we talk about addiction a lot and, and this idea of perfection, I think, is really detrimental to it. Because this idea that we all have to be perfect, that we all have to succeed the first try, it really does. I mean, if you're trying to struggle with an addiction, whatever it is, whether it's social media, opiates, cigarettes, whatever, alcohol, I mean, they're all going to be challenging. And if you're really addicted, it's going to take time and many attempts to get through it. And you have to keep trying. And I think, you know, understanding that you will fail at first is not a bad thing because it means you're going to keep trying. And I think that's the important thing. You know, I think we're so caught up with being perfect, we're so caught up with success immediately, immediate results, that we forget life is change, right? Life is activity. It takes time and effort to make what we want to happen, happen. Mm -hmm. But like we've said a million times, if we do nothing, that's the only way to guarantee that nothing changes. Right. And I think that is like the best piece of advice ever, is that yeah. if you do nothing, nothing will happen. <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. So I think we've talked about how to live with addictions, how to overcome addictions. Anything else you'd like to add at the end of this episode? You know, I think addictions I, I find very interesting. You know, I think we both struggle with them. Everyone struggles mm -hmm. with them. It, it's an interesting part of our lives. And I think we, I mentioned it before, you know, I do think there's a lot of other things that go along with addiction, psychological things, even, you know, just things in your life. And when you start to analyze your life, when you start to look at it from a different perspective, Sometimes you can start to figure out what needs to be changed to live your own life. And working on your life as a whole is helpful to get rid of your addictions and to find healthy habits because you start working towards something that you want, something positive. We were talking about this earlier, you know. You know, I, I you know, Randy and I love seeing each other. You know, he's, he's my best friend. It's great. And, you know, it's funny that I noticed over the past few years I've been paying more attention to it. And there's a lot of people in my life that, you know, want me to hang out and stuff, but they don't make an effort at all. And I started thinking, you know, why am I making an effort to do that, right? It's like looking at your life as a whole, seeing these parts and understanding what's right for me. What's, what's, what's the right approach or the right lifestyle that I want moving forward? Then you can start to build it, I think, and it helps with your perspective. Yeah, and there's kind of like, there's kind of two ways. There's one 
moving away from something like let's say you have a bad addiction that you want to get away from yeah there's one is moving away from something but then there's also moving towards something and uh, initially maybe you have to start by moving away from something but but hopefully eventually you'll get to the point where you can start moving towards something and basically that thing that you're moving towards is living the life of your dreams well i think and when you're moving away from something negative you are moving towards that life i think that is also important right mm -hmm. even if that's all you're doing and i think sometimes that is what you have to do right you just have to focus on the negative thing first yeah. and not worry about all the other stuff because i think we also do that to ourselves oh, i wanted to mention that yeah we also do that to ourselves where we focus on too many different things at once mm. and we never make progress because we feel like we're failing in too many areas mm. because we're not focused right and we've talked about this as well right yeah the idea that in order to accomplish any goal you have to have a focused plan to get actually to see action and results and sometimes that means literally reducing your life to one problem to deal with because that is the major issue. And once you overcome that, you are working towards then the better life, right? Mm -hmm. The better goals. Yeah, definitely. And I would just say that, um, you know, it's a helpful habit to ask yourself regularly. If anything were possible and if it were impossible to fail, what would my dream life be? Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's good because it's true. You know, oh, totally, <laughs> it is. totally. You can you can literally do whatever you want, and as long as you don't give up, you are guaranteed to, to succeed at what you want. So, if all that is possible, what's your dream life? And then just start working towards that. Yeah, you know what's funny? I, I and feel write like, it down. Yeah, just write, it write, down. write it down for sure. Right, writing down everything is so important. Like that it, one simple thing, you're like forty percent more likely to achieve it if you just write it down. Yeah, because you you know it's funny you won't forget it, and it also makes it more concrete. Yeah. It's out in the world now, even if it's only for you. I can't tell you how many of my old journals I had, like, things that I wanted to achieve. And now I look back and it's like, oh, done, done, yeah. done, done, done. Oh, I have so many. It's yeah. funny. I have so many. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting, too, because that, that is probably some of the best advice is just to write it down. It does. It helps so much. And it's interesting because it helps you focus, too. I think when you write things down, you can kind of work through them in a much easier way. And it's so easy. Like, you you think about it, you're like, how could that even be possible? <laughs> writing it down right, like, that's going to make it 40% more likely. It's so easy, and yet it's so easy not to do as well. Yeah, you know, it's funny. When you when you talk about, you know, what if anything was possible, what would life I, I would want to live, and how can I, you know, get it? I think writing things down helps in this aspect, too. When you want to talk about changing perspective... I've done this in journals as well where you, you write down your issue or whatever you're working through and then try to imagine a different perspective. Even on paper, mm -hmm. it's a great way to go through an exercise of if I w were to look at this differently, what would it look like? Mm -hmm. And it's actually a way to kind of get you thinking in the right way, right? It helps you work towards it by making, you know, processing it, imagining it. You know, there's a, um, it's, who was it? It's Ortega who says, you know, imagination is necessary for us to make our own conception of, of life, right? To form our own conception of life. We have to be able to imagine the life we want to live in order to then actualize it and work towards it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because all of these things around you, somebody conceived of these before, before yeah. you. And, and the crazy thing is, this, this thing you call life, it was created by people who were no smarter than you. Yeah, right? Yeah. In a lot of cases, well, that's smart. Yeah, yeah. And it's, so it's totally possible. We well, you know what kills me too, I think, with, with technology, I think one of our biggest faults with technology is we look at all these curated lives, all these other people living a certain life, and we dream about it, but it's not even a life that we would necessarily want. Yeah. You know, and I think that's one of the biggest problems too, is we get caught up in looking at these ideas of what a good life is, but we've never thought about what we actually want. And that is a crucial because... You know, some people don't, they might want to be comfortable, financially comfortable, but they might want to live in a cabin in the woods mm -hmm. and not necessarily be around a bunch of people. Or, be, you know, if you don't know that, trying yeah. to be someone else is not going to be a good life for you. <laughs> it's, uh, I was just reading this book by Naval Ravikant, and he basically talked about envy and jealousy and how he overcame it because at, in, initially he was curating he was picking these things about people that he really liked and he was like that person's money and this person's body and this person's that but the thing is you can't just select one thing of everybody if you want to have what they have in one area you have to accept the totality of them so if you want this person's money you also have to deal with their overweight and out of shape body their broken marriage their alcohol addiction all of this stuff that comes along with it 
And once he started looking at it that way, seeing that if he wanted this one thing, he would have to accept the totality, he totally uh, eradicated jealousy because he said, hey, this is I, my life is the life that I want. Yeah, right? It's, <laughs> you know, and it's funny because I think people often forget that they idolize these people with all this money, but most of them are workaholics. Mm -hmm. They work all the time, 90-hour weeks. And for most of us, that's not a good life. Because you sacrifice literally everything else of value in order to get that. And I'm not saying it, I mean, if that's what you want, that's fine. But I think it's important to know what you want first. Mm -hmm. And I think with addictions and healthy habits, that's the whole thing, right? Is you figure out what you want and you devise habits to get there. Boom. And sometimes that means, right, moving away from the worst ones first. Because then you're making progress towards at least being able to create positive ones. Boom. Boom. So, that right. is it for today's episode. Addictions. Oh yeah, you you and you. Oh, introduced. I did right. Did yeah, I? I'm so sorry. Okay. Hey, come on. Yeah. So that's it for today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> addictions. How to live with them. How to overcome them. Hopefully that helped. Um, you know, please uh, subscribe and share. You know, if you guys like like the podcast, we enjoy your our listeners very much. So and all. Yeah. That's it, right? Yes, absolutely. Right. And make sure to join us uh, midweek for a quick fix, a short little episode where we go over this week how to stay disciplined. Oh, it's yeah. relevant. Definitely. All right. Take care, Randy. <laughs>